Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Morning Devos. And uh, it's so great to spend some time with you, especially this week, to follow up on a few verses I, I didn't get to on Sunday. Um, I wanted to take a look at the first few verses, specifically of 1 John chapter 3. And if you're tracking with us, uh, we're in this series on 1 John. And our, of course, our verse, in the year, verse of the year talks about God's love for us and our love for one another. And that's how people can see God in us and how we can mature in our faith and mature as a follower of Jesus is by learning to love uh, like Jesus loved. This morning, uh, we're going to take a look at 1 John 3. I'll read a few verses and then we'll spend some time enjoying the truth that is uh, wonderfully um, built into this passage of Scripture. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Well, a couple things right off the top. Uh, anytime the Bible speaks of God's love, uh, we should stand up and take notice. As a matter of fact, I, I was speaking to someone today who made a very astute observation that as Christians, we are so used to hearing this truth that God loves us unconditionally, that sometimes we forget that other people around us don't hear that ever. They don't hear that anybody loves them let alone God. So the opportunity you and I have is to share that truth. There is a God and he loves each person tremendously, more than they could imagine. But of course, even in our own lives, sometimes as Christians, as people who hear and know that message, we forget how much God loves us. That word uh, lavish is very interesting. Um, the concept of lavish love presented in, in verse 1 is actually in grammar called a perfect tense. And perfect tense means that it's past, present, and future. It, it's something that's already been done. It's continuing to be done. And it, it will continue into the future. And we're talking about God's love. Isn't it awesome to know that we will continue to experience that love? I, I also just love the picture of lavish love. Lavish, I heard someone describe as a, a child icing a cake. You know, not worried about lines or being perfect or even just piling on the icing and, and just mounding it on there. Uh, God, God just wants to pile his love on us. And um, he wants us to receive it uh, and enjoy it, but also be changed by it. Um, not just to be a, a receptacle, a bowl of love, but to be a conduit of God's love to the people around us. And, and the way, the best way that God has expressed his love to us is including us in his family. That is why we're called children of God, because of his love for us. He has adopted us. He has invited us and made it possible for us to be part of his incredible family through Jesus Christ. There's the story in John chapter 3 where Jesus meets with Nicodemus, the, uh, the Pharisee who had questions. And this is the passage of scripture where we get John 3.16, for God so loved the world. But a little earlier in the passage, he's trying to explain this idea of being part of God's family and, and salvation and eternal life. And he suggests that you need to be born again. And Nicodemus is confused by this. How on earth can I be born again? Um, I'm not sure my mom would be thrilled about giving birth to a, a fully grown man. But Jesus said, you don't understand. This is a spiritual birth. And there is this idea um, that unless you're born again, all the information and knowledge in the world will not matter. It's that transformation. And uh, it's important that we remember being born again does indicate a, a moment where we go from death to life. But 
if we are born again, we also begin to live a new life. If we are born again, we don't live the old life. So there is this radical transformation that takes place, but it's an ongoing transformation. Now, the fact that God loves us and has invited us into his family means a, a few different things. For one, there's benefits to having God as our heavenly father. Uh, some people get a tremendous benefit in this life because of who their parents are. It opens doors for them, or maybe they have an incredible trust fund, or they can they can get a car at 16, or they get a job um, through, a, through a friend of a friend kind of thing. Um, can you imagine the God of the universe is our father? And there are tremendous benefits to that. I was thinking this weekend as we had a, a baptism and that, uh, that little child being baptized, what a benefit for that child to have parents who wanted to invest in, in the faith journey of their child. And, and God wants to invest in your faith journey as a spiritual parent. He wants you to grow in your knowledge of Jesus Christ and your, your relationship with him. We are so blessed if we are part of the family of God because of who our parent is. And it goes on to say that, that the world doesn't recognize us because they don't know what God is really like. People have some weird ideas about what God is like. But when you read the scriptures, God is a God of love and he's a God of truth. He's a God of justice. He's a God of holiness. He's a God of compassion. And, and these things all come together. And sometimes we pick the one, of, the one we like and we say, yeah, God is like, God is a, a just God and he's going to get the bad guys. And, and there's some truth to God's justice eventually being meted out um, as, uh, as, as history unfolds and, and at the beginning of eternity. But the truth is also that God has great compassion and is very patient. Um, we enjoy God's patience in our own life. We're not always so thrilled about God's patience, perhaps in other people's lives, but we should recognize God and therefore we should recognize God's children and we should recognize them by similar traits. Oh, you look like your dad. I, I, I get that, uh, occasionally. Oh, you said something that sounded just like your father, um, or your voice or your, your face. And um, what a compliment for someone to say, you look like your heavenly father. You act like your heavenly father. You sound like your heavenly father. What does our heavenly father sound like, act like, look like? We know because we see it in Jesus. We see strength, but also humility, compassion and generosity and forgiveness but justice and holiness, we see peace and mercy being extended. When you look at the Gospels and you see Jesus, that is, according to Hebrews, a, a representation, a perfect reflection of God. And you and I should look like that. And, and these verses say that we, we're becoming like that. Perhaps unintentionally, simply by spending time with God and around God uh, through our devotions, through going to church and worship and prayer. But it should also be an intentional uh, imitation of our Heavenly Father, of imitating and following Jesus. But the more time we spend inadvertently or intentionally with the Word of God, with the people of God, in prayer and worship, in the presence of God, we take on these attributes more and more until one day it says we'll see Jesus and we will become like him. What a, what a beautiful thing to look forward to and to hope for and actually to work towards the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, I hope you're encouraged today because you're loved by God and you are a child of God and you have access to the benefits and the blessings of the family of God. Are you fully embracing your identity as a child of God, enjoying those benefits and intentionally living out your identity as a child of God in the way that you treat others, in the way that you, uh, you think and you act and you live? The world needs more people 
that look, sound, and act like God and you and I, Trolls Road Church, we are those people. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful truth that your love that you have lavished on us in the past, that you're lavishing on us in the present, and you will continue to lavish on us into the future, allows us to be children of God, to be part of your family. And Lord, I pray that we would imitate our Father. We would take on the attributes that we see in Jesus Christ of what you are like. Lord, I pray that people would see you and know you through us. They would experience your love in the way that we live our lives and in the way we um, offer hope to a world that uh, is desperately seeking it. Thanks for my friends that have joined me this morning or whenever they're watching this. God, I pray that they would have a smile even now thinking about these truths. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, have a great rest of your day and rest of the week. Uh, look forward to worshiping Sunday morning together. God is good and uh, he wants you to experience his goodness firsthand. Bye for now.